In the world outside of FMC, a tank truck is just another container you fill up with a product. Maybe you spill a little of the product. No big deal. It happens all the time. Somebody will clean it up later. You get someone to sign the slip, wave goodbye, and hit the road. But this demonstration of loading is going to be very different. The product is sodium cyanide, which you don't spill. The truck is a component of a tightly closed system. And this technician has to take charge of that system when it is most vulnerable, from loading at FMC to unloading at a mine. The pre-trip inspection is just the beginning of many federally mandated procedures. Inside FMC's plant grounds, sodium cyanide does the moving within one of the most rigidly safeguarded loops in the world. But between FMC and its customer, the system has to do the moving. Watch how it's done step by step. The only way that's safe for you, the people who will be around you, and the environment. The first step in loading over 6,000 gallons of sodium cyanide into the truck is to put on full protective clothing and equipment before you do anything else. Test the safety shower and eye wash fountain. Check to make sure a self-contained breathing apparatus is close by. Leave the canister respirator you'll be carrying in your tractor where it is. This is the one you use in a sodium cyanide emergency, the kind that carries its own air supply. An FMC loader is going to be controlling the flow of sodium cyanide into the truck tank. But first, you have inspections to make. These are for your own safety because you will be the person doing the connecting and disconnecting of loading lines to the valves on the dome and the pumping station. The time to find out if there's a problem is now, before you have a tank full of cyanide. When you're satisfied that the vehicle is ready for the loading sequence to begin, only then will you start actually connecting the loading line and opening valves. The sequence now begins with the unbolting of the green flange cover of the air and vapor line, removing the cover, and connecting the vapor hose. Now, insert the bolts and the hose and align the whole assembly with the bottom plate. Then, tighten the bolts firmly. Open the valve. Pressure should drop to zero. Now it's safe to unbolt the orange flange on the loading valve. Remember, let any residual pressure vent out of the truck before you unbolt the orange flange. If you are going to use the level probe, this is the time to connect it to the wiring harness. Now you can pull down the loading arm. And once it's perfectly aligned, insert the bolts. Make sure these bolts are torqued down good and tight. With the loading arm lined up and bolted down, you can go on to the critical step, opening the orange fill valve. At the control panel, the loader is checking for go signals from the entire sodium cyanide loading system, which includes the weighing scale underneath the truck. Loading begins. 250 gallons of sodium cyanide per minute are being pumped into the truck, and it's time to take a sample for the customer. The driver draws the sample from a port that's designed to keep the product from dripping or splashing. 
One of the reasons this looks so simple is because this driver is a trained technician who knows all about handling hazardous materials. Every move she makes is careful, never hasty. The sample must be labeled. It will show the date, time, the product, the customer's name, the sample number, and the weigh ticket number. It's a necessary part of our quality control. When the control panel indicates that the truck is full, the unhooking sequence can begin as soon as the logbook is brought up to date. Unhooking the truck is a careful reversal of the loading routine, beginning with the closing of the fill valve, followed by disconnecting the loading arm. The loading arm is pulled free and pushed back into its parked position. When the arm is parked, the driver bolts the orange flange back onto the orange loading valve and tightens down the flange bolts. The driver now moves to the green valve and closes off the air, unhooks the flange and hose, replaces the green blind flange, and tightens down the flange bolts. After carefully stowing hoses and checking for leaks, the driver closes and tightens down the dome. In real time, loading takes about 50 minutes, half of which is inspecting for leaks, doing the DOT pre-trip and post-trip checks, connecting and disconnecting valves and lines, one careful step at a time, and making sure you're protected from contact with the sodium cyanide. You don't hurry at this job. You don't skip any details. When an FMC truck hits the road, it's only after every safety precaution has been taken to make sure we protect our neighbors and our environment as carefully as we protect ourselves. Loading and unloading sodium cyanide are two of the most critical stages in handling this chemical. That's because sodium cyanide can escape through loose fittings, cracks, pinholes. Trucks must be pre- and post-trip inspected by order of the Department of Transportation before loading or unloading. Our FMC driver technicians must wear a hard hat, chemical goggles, PVC rain suit, full gauntlet PVC or rubber gloves, and PVC or rubber protected steel toed boots whenever they set foot in the loading area. A face mask can be worn over the goggles, but never in place of them. As a driver technician, you must know exactly where your emergency shower and eye wash fountain are before you load or unload a truck. The loading sequence begins with green. That is, always start with the green air vent valve and airline. Let residual pressure drop to zero. Make sure residual pressure has vented. Unbolt the blind flange on the orange valve and connect the loading arm to it. Sodium cyanide begins to flow into the truck. Driver and loader make sure the flow is under control. Sampling is done during loading from the sampling port. Label the sample with the sample number and the necessary customer information. Put it inside the control room and enter it in the log. Disconnecting is a reversal of the loading sequence beginning with the orange loading valve instead of the green air valve. Watch for stray drops during the shutoff and unbolting process. They must be cleaned up immediately. Make sure flanges are tightened with a wrench. You're checking constantly for any sign of drips during this disconnect. And now you close off the air valve. Unbolt and disconnect it. The flange must be wrench tightened. Remember, the whole time you're unhooking, you're looking for any sign of spilled sodium cyanide. It's a federal law. This warning placard must be plainly visible on the truck. Don't leave without checking it.
first time our driver technician arrives at a customer's site, there may be new things to learn. The customer may have different driving rules, possibly different safety equipment. So, what we do is simply get out and get ourselves some training on the customer's way of doing things with someone to guide us. Taking a little time to learn their layout and their safety equipment is worth its weight in gold. setup is going to be similar to the scales where the truck was loaded with the weighing in just as it was back at the Green River plant we follow the procedures we've been told to follow and pull on to their scales the first thing after the weight is taken is to put on work clothes and move the truck to the loading station On some mine sites, the maneuvering can be a little tricky to get the dome positioned precisely under the loading arm. As always, the wheels have got to be chopped to make sure there's no fore or aft movement under the loading arm. Check the storage tank level to make sure it can hold all the sodium cyanide that's in the truck. Note any differences in the customer's piping arrangement from what you've seen at Green River. Check out the emergency shower and eye wash. And what's next? Always full protective clothing. PVC or rubber protected steel toed boots. Although our driver technician will be unloading the truck alone in these scenes, we require a second person to stand by for safety and for confirming that the product was delivered intact. She's checking the tank pressure before making any connections. The gauge is behind the plumbing in the dome. The sequence starts, always by making sure that valves are closed. Then, unbolting the flange on the orange valve. The flange is removed, and the unloading arm is swung into position. Bolt the arm in place. Open the fill valve. Check the pressure gauge to make sure it has zeroed. Next, unbolt the flange for the air valve. Take off this flange. And install the Chicago coupling. Then, tighten the assembly, which now has the Chicago coupling in place. The air hose that has been in place on a dummy fitting is now unparked attached to the Chicago coupling. Now that this coupling is in place, hook up the air hose from the tractor so that the hose is hooked up but the valve is still closed. Then open the valve. Now return to the dome because you still have one more valve. Open the dome air valve which completes the airflow circuit and starts the sodium cyanide flowing into the customer's storage tank. Let's review this procedure while the truck empties. 
You've started the unloading procedure by going to the dome, unbolting the loading flange and hooking up the unloading arm, then opening the valve, and making sure the small gauge dropped to zero. Next, you unbolted the flange on the air valve and took it off and added the Chicago coupling. To this coupling, you attached an air hose which was parked on a dummy fitting. Then you took a little trip to the ground and hooked up compressed air. Then up again to finish the job. The flow begins. Now if this were a milk truck, you could forget it for a little while and talk with the people while the tank unloaded. But at a customer's site, you will have paperwork to fill out, a logbook to bring up to date, and they may even want you to take a sample as you did at Green River. And throughout any loading and unloading sequence, you've got to keep a sharp eye out for leaks. Now, let's go back and disconnect the truck. The sequence reverses because you start with the compressed air circuit, first at the truck, and then back up at the dome. Remove the air hose and park it. Remove the Chicago coupling. And replace and bolt the flange. Then close the orange fill valve. Unbolt the arm and swing it back into its parked position. Replace the flange and close the valve behind the gauge. The dome can be closed after you've made a thorough check for leaks and loose connections. And that's it. Except to stow your protective clothing and check the truck for the trip back. You're ready for a safe driving return to Green River.